being invested in these types of opportunities, whether it's this deal or another deal, it doesn't matter, just in general, the mindset you need to be in is that this is like pouring rocket fuel on this spark that you might have right now. And it will take you to places that five years from now, you're gonna be having conversations you didn't even know you could be having. Monday, everybody. I am so pumped to be here. What a great way to start our week off. We get to spend some time with the one and only Vina Jetty. She has, you know, really changed my life in the last couple of months. Just being that woman that like truly supports you and claps for you, mentions your name in a room of people that don't know who you are. She's that kind of woman. And it's just so amazing when God brings people like that in our lives. And so this is a reminder for all of you watching right now that you could be that woman. You could be that man for somebody else, you know, like be the person that promotes your friends. So Totally. And um, Vina, I'm excited because we got to be together in person. What was it like a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, uh, not long ago. Yeah. In Long Beach. And you gave me the great news that we've got another deal going yeah. down. And not just a, a deal, like an amazing deal. I, really I know. It's so that. amazing. And I've been studying it like crazy. I am so excited to bring this opportunity to everybody right now that, that, you know, could be a potential investor in this deal. Mm -hmm. So I want you guys, as you're watching this right now, I want you to comment the word investor. Okay. Because like, I'm all about words and just claiming what we want to be true over ourselves. Right. So even if you've never invested in a deal before, maybe you've been a little scared, you're worried about the risk, whatever the reasons are, you are an investor. So now it's not about, you know, wanting to be an investor. It's about actually being an investor. We're going to give you an amazing opportunity to be a part of what we have going on in the next like, you know, 60 days. So remember, comment investor below. Vina is the owner and founder of Vive Funds, which I am a sub fund of, and we're going to get into that. But Vina has a lot of assets under management. She is the multifamily queen. <laughs> and I'm just so blessed to be able to do business with her and just help create safe communities all over the country with you, Vina, really providing just amazing housing for people. So Vina, do you want to share with everybody if they are new to who Vina is, share a little bit about your background and then we'll get into the actual opportunity. I love it. Okay. Can we start just like making Nick happy and giving legal disclosures? Oh yes. Thank you. We just like, let's just get the lawyers check marked. Right. Um, so this is not a formal offering to sell securities It's for educational purposes. Only a formal offering is only going to be made through mutually accepted PPM. That's fancy words for all of the legal mumbo jumbo and jargon that you're going to have to sign off on. That's there to protect you guys. It's also there to protect all of us. So trust me, any reputable sponsor will have you sign these documents. We are not the outlier. We're not the exception to the rule. But with that, now I think like we've made all the attorneys, we've paid bajillions of dollars to happy. And this opportunity is also a 506C. So it's open for accredited investors. Now, if you're not sure if you're accredited, reach out to Kayla's team. And we'll talk about what that means here in a little mm -hmm. bit. And if you're not accredited, you should still be listening because you can be doing these deals and there are other exemptions you can rely on to still be investing in opportunities. Um, so definitely stick around. We're going to go through everything, talk about like how exciting this is. So, all right, we're good now, right? Like all the not financial, not legal, not tax advice has been checked, right? Yes, I know. I am so glad you brought that up because yeah, I have to remember to do that because I, I just, I get so excited. I know. Well, I get excited too. And this part's always like the most boring part, but I'm like, all right, fine. We'll say it. Then you don't have to call me and yell at me after this, that <laughs> we didn't say it, blah, 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 blah. Um, okay. So with that, my background, uh, I'm Vina Jetty. I'm the founder of Vive Funds. This transaction is actually going to put me over a billion dollars in transactions this quarter. So I'm like very excited about this. I feel like I've been working toward this goal forever and ever and ever and ever because we do so few deals because we invest, co-invest our own money and we're really, really strict on our standards. So we won't just do a deal for the sake of doing a deal. Uh, we only want to do really great deals because we want to make sure our investors are protected and that they're going to get a good return on their money. 
So it's taken me a really long time to get to this billion dollar mark. Whereas if I was a little bit more fast and loose with it, we probably would have crossed that a while ago. But this quarter is going to be a big quarter for us. And I'm really excited that we're partnering. I just appreciate you so much, Kayla. It's been so great growing together. I've learned so much from you too, about things that I didn't know before I met you. And so I appreciate you too. And this is not our first rodeo together. I think that's important for people to know. We also did a $40 million deal together. Yes, it's going well. We just paid out uh, investors for the third time. So yes, fun. We yes, we did. And that was a month ahead of schedule too. Yep. Yeah. So it's performing really well. This feels very similar, except it's just a little bit bigger and actually a little shinier if you ask me. Ooh, okay. Yeah. And as you guys are watching this again, I want you just to think from uh, the perspective of Vina has done like Vina and her team have done their due diligence. I've done my due diligence on this project. Like there are so many hands that have already signed off and said, yes, this is a good deal. She gets, like she said, she gets so many deals that get put in, on her desk, like on a daily basis yeah. that she passes on because they're not good returns for her investors. And I, I think that like knowing you're getting on this call and you're watching this right now because everybody else has already said yes to it. Yes. So go in with that vote of confidence and look at it like through that lens, like, wow. Like, but also have questions, poke holes at it if you need to. Yep. Okay. Yes. Because there's no question you're going to ask, or there's no thought you're going to have about this, that one of us hasn't already done the exercise of going through that. Yes. Okay. So we're going to get into it here. Uh, I'm excited because I, when you said it was in Arcadia, I've been looking at homes to purchase in Arcadia mm -hmm. because it's such a great neighborhood in Scottsdale, Arizona. So mm -hmm. when I found out that it was Arcadia, I was like sold. I mean, and, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's one I of those, it, but it was just location. Like when you yeah. think about multifamily, like one of the biggest things is location, 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 because where are the jobs? Yeah, and and locations. We're going to talk about that at the end of this slideshow of this presentation. You guys will see they're around Arcadia, okay, in Scottsdale, Arizona. So we have Arcadia Cove. It's 432 units in Phoenix. So I love this area because they have an international airport. Yep. There's a lot of economy happening here, a very healthy economy happening here. And when we say class B multifamily, okay, Vina, can you explain to me why you only invest in class B multifamily? Yeah. So we love class B because it's highly stabilized. It's a newer vintage. As you can see, this is a beautiful property. There's very little deferred maintenance on this. It's visually appealing, but also in a down economy. What happens is people that are historically class A tenants start moving down into class B assets and class B tenants will start moving down into class C assets. During a down economy, class A and B tenants likely can withstand some kind of a job loss temporarily, or they have some kind of marketable skills that they'll be able to jump back into the job sector on their own. So it's kind of that more professional level tenants versus having someone that is, you know, too retail working parents, right? Like that, they make a great living. They make an honest living. But the reality is, is as the economy contracts, they're more likely to lose their jobs for longer periods of time, which means then they probably can't pay our rents, our bad debt goes up, et cetera. But we've also made assumptions for that to mitigate any risk that we could see there too. So put class B in the chat section well, as you're watching this video right now, if you understand now what class B means, okay? And it, this is just going over again. We're not financial advisors. You always want to seek your own legal counsel in anything that you're looking at investing in. So let's talk about why this, this particular deal made uh, one where you were like, yes, I for sure want this. Because you already see like, it, it's nice. Like I, I mean, it needs to be updated, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's there's minimal updates to the exterior, the interior where is where the big play is on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to get into that. So should we talk about the different types of investor classes here with Prosper, you guys, there's only two ways that you can invest in this deal. It's either coming in as a class A investor where this is one where I feel like very, very high net worth individuals go after the class A. Don't you see that, Vina? 
Yeah. Yeah. Because they just, they just want to see the um, rate of return. They're not wanting to appreciate in any type. I mean, they're not wanting to participate in the potential upside when you exit. Yeah. I also see a lot of investors that are either retired or close to retirement that want to participate in the class a returns because it's a little bit of a higher press. So it's an 8% press, but there's no upside on this, um, this share class. The class B shares are the ones that you really want to look at because class B shares are the ones that get a 6% preferred return. That means a hundred percent of the profits go to you. So if you invest a hundred thousand dollars until you get 6%, you are going to continue accruing it before Kayla or even us ever get paid out on either of our funds. So Mm -hmm. after we hit that 6%, what'll happen is it'll go to a 70, 30 split. That means that you guys will get 70% of every dollar available thereafter until you hit a certain IRR hurdle. And then it'll go to a 50, 50 return after that. And so it's really a great way to align your sponsor and your investor in the same deal, because what it basically does is it it protects investors from downside risk and allows you to also participate in the upside. Mm -hmm. And have you seen people come in at class A and class B? Yes. So that's actually really popular, especially in today's market where people want to kind of hedge my personal like investment. When I invest and we call invest into all of these deals, I go straight into the class that has all of the upside potential because I know, and I believe in these properties so much that I would rather take a lower preferred return for the massive potential on the back end. Because if you look at this, the class B average annualized return is 17.04% for a class B. Whereas if I was in class A, I'm going to get my 8% and call it a day. So I'm missing out on almost 9% of potential return after the hold period is done. And so for me, I want an extra 40% return in class B versus the equity multiple of 1.4 X. Okay. So we'll get into more around the investment opportunity towards the end. So you want to make sure to stay for this entire presentation. Okay. But uh, let's talk about just the the fun facts about Arcadia Cove. Okay, so this slide is easily what I love most about this deal and what I think makes this deal like the best opportunity that we've seen in so long. So in the last couple of years with the Fed raising interest rates, we have not seen very many deals that price out that work. It's like there was a time where we see maybe like one out of every hundred deals with pencil. Then it went to like one every 200. Then it went to one every like four. Now we're maybe pushing like five or 600 deals. We're saying no to before we see one that's worth saying yes to. And this is absolutely no exception to that. This is now what end of May. And this is the first deal we're doing all year. So if that doesn't tell you how selective and how picky we are, I don't know what will, but we are not going after volume. We're going after quality over quantity. And so this is the 1996 build, which is relatively newer, again, meaning lower deferred maintenance, lower issues. But what makes this deal a total home run is we are assuming the debt on this at 2.95%. Okay, so $82 million we're assuming at 2.95%. That is unheard of in today's market. Mm -hmm. And we quote it for today's debt just to make sure we're covering all bases this blows anything we would remotely see today out of the water. Now, that's not great. There is a 12-year term left on this. That means that we have a fixed rate debt for the next 12 years till 2035, which is an entire market cycle. That means that the market could still go down, 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 and then have enough time to come back up and recover. And we still are going to be sitting pretty with this deal. Additionally to that, those are like, I feel like, um, you know, the infomercial, but wait, there's yeah. more. Vino right? White. Yeah. <laughs> know, right. Vino White. You can call me Vino White. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, the best part about it is of the 12 year term that's remaining, seven years are interest only. What that means is there are seven more years before any of the principal and interest payments kick in, which is easily the best way. It's like a secret and multifamily of how to juice your returns without adding significant risk to the asset. And this absolutely delivers on that. Mm, that gets me, I get chills around. I this. know it's so exciting. <laughs> if I could find every deal with these, even like half as good of terms, 
I would be like, yeah, let's go. Because the numbers make so much sense when you have this kind of debt in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, You, you said something interesting to me when we were in long beach together and you said the name of the game right now in multifamily is assumable debt. Yep. Yep. Very, 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 very few properties are underwriting without assumable debt. And a few are underwriting with assumable debt, but even fewer without it. It's like almost net, like never that you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I chose to partner with Vive Funds particularly is because you guys choose, I like to call them like boring investments, okay? Yes. Because you guys choose the ones that don't need a lot of work, but have a lot of upside. There's not a lot of sexy development that's going to be going on. And, you know, no. what What I hear now when I hear development is I just hear a money pit. And so mm -hmm. I try to stay away from those um, <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah. Because, you know, especially like when you have investors coming in, this some. For some people, this might be the first time they've ever invested in a real estate deal. And this is like, you know, if if you're going like boring opportunity, think about vanilla. Everybody yeah. knows no matter what brand you buy of vanilla, what it's going to taste like. Yeah. Right. Like, you know what you're going to get. Yeah. And the plan here is Vibe is going to go in there and upgrade and renovate the interior of the units. They're all very cosmetic updates. They're yeah. going to enhance curb appeal. So, you know, it's like when you drive up to a property, we want the people who are thinking about leasing there to go, oh my gosh, this exactly. is my next home. It's so important that they have that feeling as they drive into the parking lot, that it has that curb appeal. And so that's one of the things that we're going to be doing, making sure that it's just upgraded for 2023 so they can attract really high quality tenants that pay their bills on time. Exactly. And and so we get so excited about, right? So the plan is to hold this property for five years. Yeah. And can you talk to people? Because I know people are going to go, okay, well, what's the exit plan? Because they yeah. read a book and they they said to ask. Yeah, they want the exit plan. <laughs> uh, so there's actually a couple of different exits, exit potentials on this. So we always like to have, you know, an A, B, C, D, et cetera. One exit plan that is very likely on this asset, given the debt, is a re-leverage of the debt and getting all investor capital out sometime in year five, maybe even a little bit sooner. It'll kind of depend on where the market goes and what's happening. That's one exit plan. Really the, the exit plan that we go in planning for though is an exit to another buyer. And on an asset of this size and this caliber and quality, that's really going to be an institutional buyer. It's not going to be like a random person. You're down the street, Joe Schmo is not going to come and buy a hundred, two hundred million dollar asset, right? That's not our target exit. Uh, it's going to be like Blackstone, Starwood. The other potential buyer on this is going to be a family office, a large family office. A lot of family offices really love turnkey multifamily because they're highly tax efficient, cash flowing, inflationary hedges. It's the same reason that investors like all of us should love multifamily too, is because it's tax efficient. It produces cash flow. It's an in inflationary hedge, which we all know what inflation is doing right now. And so I always like to think, like, when, for me as an investor, like, I might be just like the little guy, but I want to think, like, where's the smart money going, right? Where are the billionaire families and the hundred millionaire families? Where are they putting their money that it's being maximized in efficiency, not just from a cash flow or return perspective, but from a tax perspective as well? And that's where it always comes back to multifamily, because even in a down market, what do people need? They need somewhere to live. That doesn't go away. That's not a need that goes away. And we know that as interest rates go up, it's kind of ironic because more and more buyers get priced out of the single family home market. So they start looking for assets like this to live at, which is why we like this asset class specifically in these locations specifically. Awesome. And so I want to, just for people who don't understand what Blackstone is, those are very, very large funds. Like I think Blackstone owns Vital Farms. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I think they do. They're, um, they're one of the largest multifamily owners. I think Starwood is the largest Harbor groups, another big one to give you an example, right? Like Starwood about a year ago, they rolled out self Sophie fund 12, I think it was either 12 or 13. I think it was 12. And that was like a $12 billion equity fund, mm -hmm. meaning 
they're going to go out and spend $12 billion from just that fund. And they're going to keep spinning those up. So these are like, when we're talking about like the big money, like Blackstone owns trillions of dollars in real estate. This, yeah. These are the largest players in the entire world that own hundreds of thousands of apartment units collectively. Okay. I think I got confused between Blackstone and Black. Um, Black Rock. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I Black arm, Rock. I was like, wait, wrong. <laughs> yeah, Black Rock also, um, what's interesting about Black Rock is they've rolled out a multi-billion dollar single family fund. Mm-hmm. So these single family homes, and it's actually really important for us as multifamily investors because these single family homes are being bought by investors. Yep. So what does that mean for the average American? More rent. They're, exactly. And they're not going to be living in single family homes because they can't afford to buy them or they're having to rent them. So right. a lot of people are going to be looking for apartments to rent and to live in. And which is, again, why we go into these nicer areas, because BlackRock is not buying the $10 million house. They're buying the two to five hundred thousand dollar house. Mm-hmm. And that's a problem for middle America. Mm-hmm. And so the question really is, is if you've never invested into real estate before, that's fine because you might not have known. I didn't know until I started, right? But the question is, is as we move toward being a nation of renters, do you want to be the renter or do you want to be the landlord? Landlord. Right? Mm-hmm. And so this deal is, I mean, there's many reasons this is, uh, this is a great deal. Do you want me to go through the slide, Kayla? You want to go through it? Well, we kind of already went through the first, like... We did, I think. But I want to talk about the value add potential of like, and I think this is where I get really excited about the returns for the investors Mm -hmm. is the plan to increase rent. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love about what we do is we don't really, well, not really, we do not raise the rent until like, we don't hit that premium rent in the market until it's been upgraded. And I think that's like really important just ethically as, as landlords, right? Bina, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think what is important for people to know and understand is that as investors, our plan is always to go in and revitalize a neighborhood, right? We invest millions of dollars into these neighborhoods. I also think it's really important that people know that we pay more in property taxes than most people will ever pay in their lifetime, right? And Property taxes are what support local schools. We take a really big interest in the local economy and like supporting the local area there. Like we support local businesses there. We partner with local businesses. We invest into the community. We revitalize it. We revamp it because these are people's homes. We want them to know and feel pride in living there. And the other side effect from that is in taking care in investing into these communities, what happens is the tenants or the residents of these communities in turn go and they tell their coworkers and their friends like, hey, I live in this great place where the landlord really cares about us. The owners really care about us. And this is later in the slide deck, but I'll say one of the biggest ways we do this is right when we go in, the first thing we do is we power wash and we restrip the parking lot, right? Because that's like putting you know, a nice little coat of lipstick on, right? It (laughs) spruces it up. It makes it look pretty and fancy. But more importantly, it tells the residents like, hey, we care. We know this is your home and we care about you. And we're going to invest into your home to make it better for you. And we're going to try to improve it for you. It's not just increasing rents. We have a fiduciary responsibility to do this to our investors, to each of you. But it's balancing both sides of that because one hand washes the other in this regard. Absolutely. So when you underwrote the deal, Mm -hmm. you only put it at a rent increase of $251 per door, but the nearby properties are going upwards of $464 more a door. And so you guys will push that limit and try to get there. But the way that you've written out the projections for investors is at that $251 a door. Right. Right. Which I think is important to point out because I like, you know, 12 years ago when I first started investing, I liked the sexy, you know, one where people would say, you're going to get a thousand dollars more a door. And they just like totally over promised. Yeah. And now I like the very conservative underwriting that Vibe Funds does because I'm like, okay, I'd rather you under promise what I'm going to get and then over deliver, which you already have. Yes. Opportunities. So yes, I, I found that. no investors really get mad when we give them too much money. <laughs> no one's ever complained about that. 
<laughs> exactly. So also the, the property has low historical bad debt. And yeah. let's talk about the delinquency rate. Cause I think that's important for this neighborhood. And like when you're looking at investing in multifamily, because people might think, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm promised bigger returns at this other so-and-so area, but the, you know, the delinquency rate is high. Yeah. So I think it's really important for people to understand that delinquency in this part of the market is going to be a much bigger factor than it's ever been historically for us. Because right now, if people are not keeping their jobs, right, it's going to be a problem for them to continue paying rent. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure you're not pricing yourself out of a market where you can't sustain at least the debt service of the asset. So that's really important for everybody to realize. Um, And also, this asset has not had very low occupancy at all. It's always been very high, very strong occupancy in the 97% plus range, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And even during renovation, we're also factoring that in as we're underwriting these deals. How many do you plan to renovate at a time? Uh, So that is a good question. It's dependent. The reason it's dependent is because we're going to eventually renovate all of them. However, and I don't know if you can go to the future slide where we can talk about show the investment property. So as you can see, we're going to take the units from kind of these old classic units to these new, like kind of bright, nice asset. Um, And there's one more slide. If you go one more. Yep, here. Okay, so you can see there's 283 that are completely classic, like no work has been done. And then there's a few more that have been partially renovated. We're going to take all of these to the exact same level of renovation. Now, as far as when we do them, we typically will do them in conjunction to lease expirations because what you don't want to do is go in and be like, all right, we're going to renovate 283 units right now. And then one, how do you get the tenants that are mid lease out? You can't. Two, you don't want to end up with really high vacancy because then it destabilizes the asset. So it's going to be a very controlled and methodical decision of how we renovate. Now, with that being said, part of why you need a really great sponsor in today's market is because sometimes it is not the right decision to renovate that unit in that month as you had initially planned because maybe the vacancy will be too high or maybe materials are backed up so you are better off actually renewing the lease for three months or six months or 12 months and reallocating your renovation schedule. It just depends. And so that's why you need a sponsor who really understands the nuance of renovation schedules that can help manage that for you. I love it. Okay. So let's talk about that. The sponsor track record Mm -hmm. because like Vive Funds has done such a great job in the life. I mean, you guys have never had a deal go bad. And I think that that's like really important to, to point out to people. You've always returned great stuff. To yeah. Answer. We've never lost investor money. Um, as far as like a deal go bad, we hold ourselves to a really high standard. So I actually, I have one deal in my portfolio where I, and it actually wasn't a vibe deal. It was a different company that I had co-founded. And that deal actually did not go as planned. It was definitely in the middle of COVID. It was a class C asset, really tough tenant base. It was like a comedy of errors. Like we had a, I can't make this up. Like lightning struck the property, literally took out every fire panel. At the same time, the fire marshal came and did like a random inspection that week. And COVID had backed up all the replacement part. It was, it was wild, but We never lost money on that deal. Really what ended up happening is we generated a slightly lower return than we had anticipated, but it was still a solid return. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was around a double digit return anyway. So, you know, it's like, okay, it wasn't, it was definitely not ideal. And like I said, we hold ourselves to a really high standard. So for me, that was a huge failure. Mm -hmm. But when I tell people that they're like, wait, so your investors still made a bunch of money. I'm like, yeah, but it wasn't (laughs) what we wanted to do with it. And they're like that doesn't make any sense. This no, that's what, sense. that's part of why I chose to partner with you and yeah. buy funds is just because you guys have such a high standard and it's excellent, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and so, we want to maintain that. Yep. But it's, I mean, it's Absolutely. certainly disappointing when we don't hit the returns we wanted to, but that, you know, that was, there was, a, and what we do really well, I think 
is we increase communication and tra- we maintain transparency throughout the process. So our investors were never surprised by it. They knew and understood exactly what was happening at every month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So talk to me a little bit about your track record. You know, how many units have you bought and sold in yeah. the last several years? You know, this is actually a little bit outdated because we have bought and sold, I think it's over 4,400 now. Uh, Yeah, so a few more than this, but still all the same. Like I said, 900 million we bought and sold over the last several years. And our most recent exit was actually another deal very similar to this in the Atlanta MSA. And that deal, we held it for 18 months and we almost doubled investor money. So we 1.88x investor money. So if you invested $100,000, we gave you back $188,000 in 18 months. I mean, that's incredible. It's unheard of. And look, that's definitely a grand slam, right? Like we hit that one out of the park, but it goes back to what we're talking about renovation schedules. It was almost 500 units. We had planned to renovate all 500. We ended up renovating 41. And then exiting. And the reason we did that is because we just did not have to renovate. We did not have to expend those dollars. And so what ended up happening was our investors just got massive returns because we didn't expend those dollars unnecessarily. We knew what the right levers to pull were. So we sold it for a $30 million profit 18 months after we bought it. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. We're going to hope that this happens again. (laughs) I'm going to try my best. So we've talked about the exit strategy. We've talked about why it's attractive debt that you guys are bringing, you know, assuming onto this deal. I want to show how you guys figure out what the rent growth will be in this specific area. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit to that? Yeah. So I actually, you know, I'm kind of a nerd, a tech nerd. And what I love about what, how we're underwriting is we've been implementing AI technology. Everybody's heard it. It's like the buzzword of the hour, right? right? It's AI, AI, AI. We've actually been using AI in our underwriting for like two years now, maybe two and a half years. So we've just adopted it more into all of our processes. But one one of the things we've utilized is these really, really highly accurate millions of data points to be able to model out what's going to happen years in the future with more accuracy because of the AI technology that we use. And this is not AI that like, it's not like chat GPT, right? Where anybody can really access it. We pay tens of thousands of dollars for access to these programs and this software. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I we're using artificial intelligence too in so many facets, but like in our um, you know single family flipping, we're using AI. It's so awesome that uh, game changer. Yeah, it is. It's a game changer. Like for things like this, where sometimes you have that human error. Yeah, I love that you have the AI <laughs> aspect of it. Yeah. it. you know it really saves us there. So I love that. Okay, absolutely. So we talked about a little bit about the unit renovation. Do you want to talk about anything on here where? Yeah, I mean, I think this is all pretty standard. We're assuming about 15K a unit, um, which is going to yield a $251 premium at a minimum. Likely it's going to be more than that. That's always been our experience. But if it doesn't, that's fine. We can sustain with just $251. That's a 21% return on renovation, assuming we only get that $251. It's far likely we do more than that. Let's say we were to double it. That's like a 40% return on renovation. Also, we are going to create additional fees because it's pretty market standard. We're going to add about $8 $8 a unit. We really might end up seeing closer to $10 or $12 a unit. It just kind of depends. But we'll test these things to see where the right amount is. But we know $8 is pretty low for this market and for our portfolio in general. And then as far as, you know, the curb appeal, uh, curb appeal landscaping and deferred maintenance, we're going to go in and we're going to clean up the property. Like I said, we really care about our residents being happy to say they live there, having pride in where they live. Mm-hmm. And what we found too, is when we take care better care of the asset, our residents take better care of the asset as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, if something's nice, you want to keep it nice. Exactly. Exactly. You feel bad messing it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So here we already went over what yeah. it's going to look like. Um, again, showing the kitchen. We want to show the outside. Um, yeah. And here, this is really important, I think, because as you can see, we have almost a million dollars in a contingency budget 
which means we have a lot of room for things to kind of move in a direction that we weren't anticipating or hoping for. And we still are well within our assumptions on the pro forma. I am so happy to see that amount of spread because yeah. some people like, you know, you always need to plan for things to go wrong. You, yeah. should, you should always yeah. plan for things to go wrong because like you saw during COVID, I mean, yeah, like what is the, we need to not have just a plan A, we need to have a plan A, B, C, and D. Yeah. And I think Vive Funds does a really good job at that. Absolutely. And I'll say without proper contingency budgets on our recent assets, we would not have been able to sustain it, which is again, why you need an experienced operator who knows and understands those things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is this the gym on property? Is it being yes. upgraded? Uh, yes. So we're, we'll go in and we'll potentially re refresh it. I don't know that we're going to do so much updating to it, but we are definitely going to refresh it. Also, I think it's worth noting that now, let's see, I think four of our executive level and up um, team members have already walked the asset. I'm actually going to walk it again next week, or actually this week. Gosh, I'm missing all my days. At the end of this week, I'll be back in Arizona again, and I'll be re-walking it. My JV partner, Ellie, she walked it again last week. We've had, you know, our acquisitions director, our managers, our property manager, everybody's already walked it and blessed the property as well. So I think it's important to note that as well. Mm -hmm. I need to fly out and meet you. You should. I really should. Cause it's only a 45 minute flight. Oh yeah. You should come. I'll text you the details after we hang up. So I love, I love the fact that like, it's important to have a community center in all of your properties, mm -hmm. right? Especially with 432 units. That's a lot yeah. of people there. It's a great place to network and meet people but it's also just attracting like those types of people that are looking for amenities. And I just think that's a, it's a different type of person, you know? Absolutely. So Absolutely. I like to point that out. It's like, you're looking for like that tenant base that cares, yeah. you know, that cares about yeah. these things. So, exactly. We've talked about this before. These are the types of assets that you or I might've lived in, right? right. When we were getting out of college or when we were in our twenties, right? Like, and that's the type of tenant base we want to attract as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a former version of ourselves. Exactly. Yep. This is a stepping stone for them, but they exactly. treat it with lots of love. Exactly. So let's talk about the mix of the units. Yep. There's so more the majority of these units are either two bedrooms or three bedrooms, which is always great. Um, as you can see, the effective rent is still below the market rent. So there's room there without even renovating. It's below market rent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... I, I, I want to get into where this is located because it gets me, this is what gets me the most excited about yeah. this property. I want to talk about the market overview and then we'll go back there. Mm -hmm. So let's speak about why you were excited to be in the Phoenix area. Oh my gosh. We love Phoenix. It's a great market. We've been looking at, in Phoenix forever and ever and ever. We have been underwriting this market for years wow. and we have not been able to get the right asset under contract, which is really tough when you want to be in a market specifically because of how great it is. And I think that it's important for people to know that there is a, there's an Indian reservation that is kind of a natural barrier to development in this area. So it does not allow for new multifamily development. Uh, secondly, there are mountains there, right? And so there's just some areas you cannot develop multifamily. It's too cost prohibitive if you were trying to do it. And there's been a much slower pace of rezoning by the city of for new multifamily development anyway. And it's it's worth it because to recognize that CBRE estimates only 25% of the land will actually be delivered for new development, just in general, for any kind of new development a result of these phenomena. So it's important to know that also Axiometrics forecasts, which is our AI platform, they forecast three to 4% growth per year during the whole period in East Phoenix, which actually is outperforming the greater Metroplex, the greater Phoenix area. So the Phoenix area in general is still a great market, but specifically the submarket is better than even the rest of Phoenix, which is great. That's awesome. And this is where it's located. Yep. Like, like I told you, I've been looking for homes in Arcadia 
yeah. and in Paradise Valley. Once I can talk Chase into moving. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm always, cause this Paradise Valley is, I mean, there are like $14 million homes, $20 million homes. I mean, it is yeah. a beautiful, beautiful neighborhood. And there's Arcadia Cope, you know, so you're, <laughs> you're within this five mile radius of just nice. Like people yeah. want to be in this area because it's safe. There's a lot of, there's a lot of jobs in this area. You can see here, it's close to downtown, 70, 72,000 plus jobs. Yeah. Uh, you have South Scottsdale that also has $30,000, $30,000. Oh my gosh, 30,000 jobs. Yeah. You tell I talk a lot about dollars, Mina. No. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, but nearby Midtown, you're near the airport. I mean, there is so much life happening here. And why is that important when you're looking at multifamily and looking at this, this particular, you know, radius? I mean, you definitely want jobs that are high paying, right? Sustainable. Mm -hmm. So when you have companies like Merrill Lynch, Northwestern Mutual, Charles Schwab, Bank of America, State Farm, JP Morgan, SAP, Yelp, McKesson, Career Builder, all of these are companies that are unlikely to go under mm -hmm. entirely. And these headquarters are typically filled with professionals, which means that they're making a decent income and they can afford your rent and they probably have a savings and they care about their credit. This might be the last stop before they go and buy a house of their own. They may right. need to just save up for a down payment for a couple of years, or maybe they're trying to figure out exactly where they want to live because they just got a new job at Zillow. And so these sub markets are really key to, this is kind of part of our secret sauce actually of how we've been so successful. Mm -hmm. is, is finding where these like high paying jobs are. And one of the things I always tell investors too, is it's probably because I used to be an ER nurse, but I always look like, where's the medical jobs? And you can yeah. see that they're very much nearby Arcadia Cove, because those are, yeah. those are ones where uh, no matter what the economy is doing, there will yeah. always be medical jobs and they want a safe place. They're working all the time. They want a safe place to live and a quiet place to sleep. And I love how nearby it is to, to those types of jobs as well. Yeah. And if you look, there's a slide which shows kind of the home pricing. Arcadia home, average home prices are $1.3 million. Right. The Arcadia light average home price is 750000 okay. So you can see like this is in such cl close proximity to really high end homes because this is more even 720000 is more than the average home price in America. These are nice neighborhoods. These are great school districts. These are areas where people seek to live out. So this is just in very close proximity to that, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now I want to go back here to um the investor opportunity. Yeah. So people always ask this, you know, they want to see the pro forma. And mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so you guys can always go back and like really study this if you want to. I mean, I highly recommend it, just checking it out, but we're not going to go over that today. We're going to talk about just like the opportunity of what you guys can invest in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we talked about class A you are getting that 8% preferred return. And yeah. like I see with some people that they want to do both coming in at class A and class B because class A, it's like they just, they're okay with not participating in the upside because yeah. all they're wanting to do is they're just wanting to make their cash stretch, right? Sure. It makes sense when someone wants to do this because it's it's like someone in retirement, they want fixed income. They want to treat it like a coupon, which is, I, you know, I, I say sure like that, I think, cause I always think that investors mostly should either be blending or they should be going for the upside potential personally. Now, what's interesting is for us as GPs, it's actually better for us when people go into class a, because right. we need more money. <laughs> so it's counterintuitive that I say this, but I just, I think it's better for investors overall. And I'd rather have a happy long-term investor than an investor who is just, you know, coming in, making an okay return and not that excited about the next term. Right. I, that's why I get excited about the class B investment. And, and I think most of the people who are watching this right now, they have a long runway of, you know, their life ahead of them. And so, you know, you have to look at the risk, somebody that's a class A that is in retirement and maybe they go, you know, I have, I have another 10 years. And they're just going like, <laughs> um, you know, they really just want to make that stretch. But for me, I go, okay, if I'm going to invest $500,000 into this mm -hmm. opportunity, uh, would I rather take on the, 
the lower preferred return with the potential upside, absolutely all day long, because I'm okay with not seeing that money again for another five years. Yeah. Because, you know, I have so much life to live left. I agree. I agree. I mean, I think the younger you are, the more risk you can take on. And so I agree with you. That's why I like the class B investment also, because I really believe in this. So I know that like on the deal, last deal we exited, if someone went into the class A shares and actually that prof at that time was 9%, they would have been limited to 9%. Whereas my investors made 80% in one year. That's crazy. It's unheard right. of. So, or sorry, in 18 months, 80% in 18 months, you would, you would have gotten 18% versus 80%. Yep. Let's talk about how the fund gets paid. Cause I think that a lot of people don't understand what that looks like. And I want to make sure that you guys understand that the fund only gets paid after you get your preferred return. So 6%. So let's just talk about that. Like the 6%, you're never going to make that with it sitting in a bank. No. Like, period. Yes. So Vina, how do you kind of explain that to people? Yeah. So first and foremost, this is a way that we hedge risk for investors, right? We say you guys get paid first, we get paid last. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we do that is because we believe in our investments. We know that we're probably going to deliver above that 6% pref or the 8% pref. So we, we eat last is essentially what it is. So first the debt gets paid, then any preferred equity and there's, we haven't yet finalized any terms on preferred equity. So we don't know if that's going to sit there, but that this is very common in the institutional world on deals of this size. But then it goes to the class A investors, which, you know, like Kayla said, if you want a higher return, then yeah, sure. You should go into that share class. 8% Eight, is a great return still. It's still a solid return. And then you go to class B and class B is where I like to sit, where I think Kayla likes to sit. All of us really prefer that share class. and then. And when I say we like to sit there, I mean, like when we invest our personal money, we invest right alongside of you guys as investors. Yep. My co-sponsor and I, both of our families combined, we're not entirely sure how much we're investing yet, but it's going to be between five and $7 million. So we're our own largest investor and we're going to sit right in there with you guys. We're investing in the same share classes that are available to our investors. And then after that, after that, then we get paid as general partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I love when I found out that you invest in every deal that made me like super excited because, and even just the last one we did, I personally invested my money too, because it's like, I believe in it. I want to be a part of this upside. Yeah. Too. You know, yeah. like if you really believe in it, you'll have skin in the game. And I think, am I right that all the sponsors are personally investing in this, right? Yeah. Actually also our employees are now investing into these deals too. Cause they're like, wait, why am I like letting only our investors invest in this? Can I invest? I'm like, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. yeah, actually my, my investor coordinator, who's like one of my right hands, he's investing. Ellie's director of investor relations. She's investing. My sister, who's my partner at Vive, she's investing. We all invest. That's awesome. All That's of us. Awesome. Yeah. So for, for you guys to come into the Prosper Fund um, at that class A level, the minimum investment is 250000 Okay. So it is a much higher minimum investment to come in at that level. And class B, we've put the minimum investment at a hundred thousand. One thing that I've noticed like is, you know, a hundred thousand, and it makes it so easy to do calculations too. Um, <laughs> it, uh... I like that number, but, um, I want you guys to think about this. You can invest directly from your IRA accounts and what I've seen with so many of my investors is they have a lot over there that's not making a lot of money, mm. right? especially in, um, you know, whatever they have it in mutual funds, um, stock market. It doesn't, I don't, I don't know. I, they have it invested in different things that they don't understand. And I love that you can go to a company like directed IRA, which I have a link for you guys, get it put over into a self-directed. I've already been approved and um, Vina's already been approved with directed IRA, because they're a custodian. So they will choose funds that are like, yes, we have checked it. These are good for you to put your, your IRA into. So you guys can pull directly from that tax free and put it into a deal like this on mm -hmm. Arcadia Co. That gets me so excited. I didn't know about this until I got into this fun world, uh, really? you know, where I'm raising money. Oh. I'm like, what? 
It's the best kept secret that nobody tells you about. It's crazy to me, mm-hmm. like how many mil- billions of dollars get just lost from opportunity cost. And I didn't know, I didn't know that you had directed on your yeah. vendor list. I am speaking at their conference. So I'm going to see you next month. I'm speaking That's where I, I saw you because I was watching Matt's stories and yeah, yeah. He's yeah, great. I know. I'm super excited. To yeah, see they're great. Him. They're great. I'm I'm excited about this too. Okay, amazing. Okay, so we've already kind of talked about this, but let's let's talk about let's what this type of yeah. money you could get back. Yeah. So and we do everything based on a hundred thousand because, like you said, mental math is hard, <laughs> and so we use a hundred thousand. Of course, if you're going to invest more, just multiply it by whatever. You, like if you're investing two hundred thousand, multiply it by two. If you're investing five hundred, multiply it by five. But basically. The first two years, what's really important to know is those are going to be lower returns than we typically would see on a fully stabilized, no value add asset. And they're going to be, they're actually going to be lower straight throughout the project. But as you can see here, year one and year two, we're focused heavily on renovating and repositioning. And then by year three, our returns really get juiced up. So what a lot of people are going to ask me is they're going to be like, but if I have 6% pref, how am I going to get that if I'm only getting 3.61 or 5.39? Mm-hmm. And what a pref means is it means we allocate the dollars to you. So in this scenario, 3.6% in year one, it means I'm still going to owe you 2.4% in year two. So now I'm going to owe you 2.4% plus the 0.61% that I'm going to be short year two. And then in year three, I'm going to owe you the culmination of what's accrued in year one and year two. And then in year three, I'm going to get above that where I'm going to catch you up. And then what will happen is it's going to keep accruing. So you don't just lose the 6% pref in year one and year two because the property can't support it. Now, again, we underwrote it with really conservative assumptions. So if we over deliver on the property, there's a good chance you will get above the 3.61. But like Kayla said earlier, we like to under promise and over deliver. Mm-hmm. Oh, gets me excited. So, so know, potential... Again, this is not guaranteed. Nothing in life is guaranteed, but a hundred thousand in total return could potentially be one hundred and eighty-five thousand two hundred and nine dollars. I yeah. like it. And this is just straight up mailbox money. You wire your money, and then you just get you just check your bank account monthly, and you're like, bing, bing, this is fun. Yeah, so exciting. And if you want to be really involved, you can read the monthly emails, which no one right? ever does. <laughs> I think it's important. Like for me personally, I have myself invested in funds where I have nothing to do with them. I'm just receiving the mailbox money, the pings, you know, some pay quarterly, some pay annually. And um, I like that. It's just like, wow, it's, it's a part of that, like changing your mindset Mm -hmm. of, I don't have to work hard for money. Money gets to work hard for me and it supports my lifestyle. And so it's a different way of thinking because a lot of people, when they've never invested before, Vina, they get, you've probably seen this. They think like, like it has to be harder. Like that's it. And it's like, no, that's, that's really, really it. it. That's, that's really it. <laughs> yeah. And the key is the hardest work comes in vetting the person putting the opportunity in front of yep. you and the company putting the opportunity in front of you. Uh, you know what I tell investors, since it sounds like there might be a lot of newer investors yes. is you want to really think about If you're talking to someone and all they're saying is like, oh my gosh, this is great. This is amazing. There's no harm. There's no risk. You should run because Mm -hmm. a real true investor knows that this is not just easy. Everybody would do it if it was easy. But what they also know is they have the confidence and the experience to continue operating through those hardships and through those hurdles. And they'll be able to lead you through those hurdles. Right. And that's what. Kayla is here for, right? She has looked at thousands and thousands and thousands of deals. And she knows when she's looking at deals, you probably say no to just as many deals, if not more deals than I do. I do. I I have gotten really good at saying no. Yeah, no, 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 no. And so what I think new investors should be doing is one, know and understand who you're investing with because this is a relationship for five years. You don't Mm -hmm. like me that much now. You're probably not going to like me in three years either, right? Or you're not going to like me if things aren't going well. So make sure this is somebody you want to like wake up and you're excited to see what Kayla's up to, what she's doing, what she's investing, right? I look to people like Kayla to say like, okay, I know she's smart money. I know she's made a lot of money. 
where are you putting your money, Kayla? I want to know that, right? And how many times do we talk not just about these opportunities, but about other things you're investing in, right? right? We talk about a whole global world of investments because smart money is moving into the market at the most rapid pace that I've ever seen today. Mm-hmm. Wow. And not everybody has to do that. It's not going to be for everybody. But the question is, do you want to follow the centimillionaires and billionaires, or do you want to follow what the average person down the street is telling you to do, which is, okay, go to, go to work 40 hours a week, two weeks of paid vacation, W2, which is great. It's a great living. That's how my dad made his money. My mom was a real estate investor though. So that was his secret weapon to really building generational wealth. This is how smart money does it. This is how you guys can do it too. It's open for all of us. You just need to know about it. Yes. And that's why I'm so passionate about doing these types of webinars and making sure like everybody in my community knows about this opportunity because Mm -hmm. I wish I would have known about private funds 12 years ago when, when I started making money. I mean, I I see it's, it's insane. The opportunity that's available to people. Um, if you just start to open up your eyes and, you know, it's like hitching your wagon to the right people. Yeah. And um, Vina, like you're so humble, like about what you've been able to accomplish, but you're in business with your sister, Priya. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you come from a, I like to say like, you come from a bloodline of success because your mom and dad were <laughs> successful. Yeah. And then, you know, you just have that in you. And so Priya has that in her too. So can yeah. you talk about Priya's success and why you guys make such a good team at Vive? Well, I've been bossing her around her whole entire life. So that actually works out really well for me. Now, uh, she, she's actually the integrator. She's the backbone of the company. She's the one that really makes the whole world go round. I, you know, I tell her like, Hey, I was thinking about this thing. And then the next day I'll wake up and there'll be like a whole entire spreadsheet with like all of these bubbles and everything showing me exactly where we're going to like do this thing and all these tasks that I now have to do which is really incredible to see because my brain just does not work like that. And I love that she has that organizational skill to be able to help me be a better investor and to make better decisions because I get to focus on the things that I'm really good at. But I think the the other thing to really consider and think about is if this is the right opportunity for you, um, you want to make sure you're making the right decisions for yourself. You know, talk to your lawyers, talk to your business advisors, to whoever you need to, to make a good financial decision for yourself. But these are the tools that the most wealthy people in this country have been utilizing for years and years and years and generations and generations and generations. This is like thinking, think about if you have like a little bit of a spark of being an investor inside of you, being invested in these types of opportunities, whether it's this deal or another deal, it doesn't matter. Just in general, the mindset you need to be in is that this is like pouring rocket fuel on this spark that you might have right now. And it will take you to places that five years from now, you're going to be having conversations you didn't even know you could be having. And the reason is because it's a mindset. It really is. And I, I hate it when people say that, because I'm like, I'm totally like a practical thinker. Like you're a little bit more crunchy than I am, Kayla, right? Totally. Like, I'm very practical, right? And so when someone's like, oh, you know, it's a mindset and a feeling, I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. That's like not even a real thing, right? But it's so true. And I'm eating my words after being in these rooms. Like it really is because when you start to think something's possible, you take subconscious steps to make sure that those things happen. And that's why I love you started out by saying, I'm an investor. Like that's the first thing you guys should be saying. Because if you don't, if your brain, your brain's not actually that smart in and of itself, you can trick it into believing certain things, right? It's a belief system. It's a mindset. And if you trick yourself or trick your brain into saying, I'm an investor, you're going to start making decisions as if you are an investor, Mm -hmm. right? If you're, if you say, I am smart money. I follow smart money. You're going to start looking for those nuances. And this isn't even related to this deal at all, but just in general, in your world, you're going to start seeking out like-minded individuals. You're going to find all of the Kayla's of the world and go and follow them and listen to what they're doing and find out what they're doing. And if you're like me, you'll blow up their DMs asking them like, Hey, what are you investing in? Right. Like, and that's what, that's what's she's smart money. I'm really smart money. Cause I follow the smart money. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you know, it, it's, it's said that foolish people learn from their own mistakes and mm-hmm. wise people learn from other people's mistakes. Exactly. And I learned that like, as I became an investor at first, I just, I did my own thing. I didn't look to mentorship. I just made these like very much like risky decisions. And I lost a lot of money because of it. I was a foolish investor. And that's why I'm so passionate about talking about the mistakes yeah. that I've made and making these opportunities available to people that otherwise they just, they would just think that they are so far from it. Like, I think my mindset 12 years ago would have been like, oh, I'm not, I don't have enough money to do that. But some people you have it sitting in your, you know, your IRA account that you can just direct it over here. You have it sitting somewhere, not giving you the returns that you deserve um, just because you just don't know. And so I'm really passionate about just making sure people know about this opportunity, Vina. And I'm so thankful that we were able to, to do this call today. I know we've gotten some questions. I got a couple of questions too. Okay. So I'll ask you a couple of them because you're going to be a better person to answer them. And then whatever ones you want, I'll answer too. But Okay. So one of the questions I have is if you're interested in this, in this investment, what are the next steps to actually move forward? Okay. So if you're interested in this opportunity, all you need to do is just DM me. Uh, You guys can email me. I'll drop my email too in there, but I'm going to actually send you to our investor portal. It's on invest next, and you can actually look through this entire slide deck on your own. You guys will be able to see the private placement memorandum. So that's where you sign on the dotted line. And then you can literally wire your money directly through the invest next portal. So if, if you want that, I will just give you that access. So you just have to email me. Okay. And I'll give you that link. I'm not going to give it to everybody. I only want like serious investors that want that. If you're somebody that goes, Kayla, I want to do it, but I need to figure out how to get that money from my IRA account. Good news is that because we're already all set up with directed IRA, it literally only takes you about seven days to get the transfer initiated from wherever your money is being held right now. So I also have a link for you for that. So just DM me. Vina taught me something I really took to heart. She said, before any money has been transferred, like you'll know the relationship, right? And so I think that it's really important to know that like for me, your money, like if you give it into the fund, I act like it's my money and I don't like losing money. (laughs) Uh, I, I don't, you know, I've lost enough of it years ago. And so I'm very diligent. And I mean, I lose sleep over things like just even little things, because I want to make sure that everybody feels like they're treated with so much love and care because I know it's a big decision to, to make, like, especially if you, if you're just now getting into it and so much of my community is just now getting into it. And so just know that you'll see that tender love and care in, in this part of the relationship, but forevermore too, because I really want this to be not a a transactional one-time thing, but a forever thing, because we're going to keep bringing you opportunities to grow your cash. Yeah. And I think it's important too, that people know we don't work with just anybody in a fund to fund model either. We're very selective. And the reason we keep going back to work with Kayla in, is because you are the same energy. You have alignment with our business goals and how we want our investors treated because ultimately I don't want them thinking that we're the ones that are doing a bad job. Right. And so I love how diligent you are with your investors. And, you know, you just, you take so much care. We talk all the time. We have a completely open line of relation or line of communication. And our relationship is very strong because you're such a good steward to your investors. So I really appreciate that about you too. Thank you. Uh, Yeah. Okay. I have one more question here. I already reached out to Kayla to invest. And if I want to increase my investment, can I do that? Absolutely. There is still room. But it's also like, if you're thinking about it, don't think about it anymore. Like do it now, because as soon as we, as soon as we fund, that's as soon as we fund. Yeah. 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 And like, we have, you know, 30 days, but it could, I mean, if everybody gets money to us by Friday, we're, we're wrapping up. Yeah. You're done. You're (laughs) done. Sorry. We're done. Okay. And then, um, what's the, what's the maximum I can invest and what's the minimum I can invest. The minimum investment is a hundred thousand. Okay. And then the maximum investment is 10 million. Okay. And I still have more questions that I need answered. Who can I reach out to? Yeah. So you can actually just email 
Okay. You can email funds prosper and I'll put it in the, in the chat section as well. Cause you guys can email us any questions that you don't, don't feel, you know, like you want to put it in the chat section right now. So I'll put my email there. You can also, once you make your invest next account, you guys can communicate directly with me on there, which is as a nice thing that we have going on. Cause Avina, very so nice and for. streamlined. I'm so thankful for. So basically the thing is the moral of the story is talk to me. Don't discount yourself until you talk to me. So reach out to me, yeah. DM me. We will make a plan together of how you're going to come in to this deal. Because like I said, I want to make this available for everybody. So I'm definitely open. There's one more question. Okay. I really love this opportunity and I'm going to invest, but I want to know if I can share this with my friends and family. Uh, you can absolutely share it with your friends and family. That would be amazing. I love that. I mean, I think, I think I have a lot of network marketers that are watching this right now and they're thinking, can I get paid to share this with my friends and family? And because like, this is a securities offering you, we can't do things like that. Like we can't give homie hookups. So mm -hmm. you can share out of the kindness of your heart, right? Is that how you would say it, Vina? Yeah. I mean, listen, if you have found a great opportunity, like I would be mad at my friends and family for gatekeeping that from me. Right. So I think it's the goodness of your heart to help your friends and family. Cause like, it's not fun to do cool things by yourself. You want friends that can afford to do it with you. Right. And so I think I, and I'll tell you, this is like the, actually this kind of question is the most complimentary question. Cause it's like, it's one thing for you to trust me with your money. It's another thing for you to trust me with your neighbor's money, your sister's money, your kid's money, your best friend's money, right? Like all of that is, it means so much more to me than just like you trusting me with your money. Cause I, I, I get that. I understand that, but this is like a, the next level of trust. So kudos to you for building that kind of trust with your community. I love that. And you know what, like something to be said is like, before I started my own fund, I raised millions of dollars for other people's funds for other people's startups. And I did that just because I wanted to help people. And I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh, this is a good deal. I wanted you to get a part of this, right? A piece of this pie. And what happens in people's mind is like, when you, when you refer somebody, right. And they get money back on that deal, yeah. you have now been planted as a seed of authority in their mind. Mm -hmm. So they will be like, um, like, Hey, you're starting oh. a clothing line. You're, you're doing a, a franchise business. They're going to be like, Oh, I'll invest with you. So yeah. you never know what's going to happen in your life five, 10 years from now, where you might need to be raising your own capital. So you've gotten that muscle like built up of like getting getting a track record of success for your friends and family. So that is so um, true. Yeah. So true. I've seen that happen many, 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 many times. Mm -hmm. I've had people that have invested in deals that I was just investing into. Like I didn't get paid from it. I just told my friends and family about it. We all invested together and we made a bunch of money from it. Yes. And it's really fun to make money with your friends and family, like really fun. It really uh, is. And so I think like that is a total unintended benefit of investing in these types of deals and having this kind of closeness to great opportunities. And you're going to look like uh, the bomb.com, right? Like you're going to be like a rock star, mm -hmm. uh, which I love, but I, I love that everybody just like came and gave us their attention and shared this time with us just to like even geek out about something we're so excited about. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Again, if you're interested in investing in Arcadia Cove with Vina and I just reach out, you guys can DM me anywhere you're watching this video right now, DM. Okay. And I'm just so thankful for yeah. you, Vina, and just who you are in this world. You're such a bright light and right. um, being able to do deals like this with you and help bring safe, amazing communities to the world is like that next level fingerprint you know, I that I want to leave in my legacy. So I appreciate you. I'm so excited to do this deal with you. I'm excited about this deal in general. Me too. Yeah. So, I'm, ready, I'm ready to wire. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I am too. So I'm just like, okay, can we close yet? Cause I want to get in there so bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Thank you, Vina. And thank you everybody thank for you. watching this. Bye guys.